In this video, we're going to discuss the rate constant and the Arrhenius equation. The rate constant we've seen a few times in our rate laws. Every time we write a rate law, we always start with K, then we add in the reactant concentrations and the reaction orders. But up to now, we haven't really explained what exactly K is. So K describes how the reaction rate depends on temperature and activation energy. Even though it is a constant, there is an equation for the rate constant K. And the equation is the Arrhenius equation, where K is equal to AE to the negative EA over RT. Now, in this equation, A is a constant that you don't have to worry about for an MCAT, so we can disregard that for the most part. E is also a numerical constant. It's like pi, but a different number. So again, don't need to worry too much about that. EA, we've discussed before, this is the activation energy. R, we've also seen before, this is the gas constant. And T, we've also seen before, T is the temperature. Okay, so these are the different variables within the Arrhenius equation. And when you look at this equation, it actually looks really, really complicated. The math is not simple. And the, math, the MCAT knows you don't have a calculator when you're taking the MCAT. So it's unlikely they're going to ask you to do a calculation with this equation. You should be able to recognize this equation. And you should know the relationship between the rate constant and activation and temperature based on this equation. And specifically, from this equation, the rate constant is directly proportional to temperature. And the rate constant is inversely related to activation energy. And these should make sense. Uh, when we're looking at chemical reactions, the chemical reactions is usually involving molecules colliding with each other in solution. If you increase the temperature, your molecules are going to be moving faster, so there's going to be more collisions. And more collisions will mean more reactions happening, so a faster reaction rate. Another example is during reactions, your molecules need to have sufficient energy to exceed the activation energy barrier. So again, if you increase the temperature, your molecules are moving with greater kinetic energy. So each collision involves more energy, so you have more collisions that are likely to be able to complete the reaction. Inversely proportional activation energy makes sense. We've discussed this before. The higher the activation energy, the more energy is required for the reaction and the slower the reaction. And from this, we can also understand how catalysts can increase the reaction rate. So catalyst decreases the activation energy. And you can see, since the rate constant activation and energy are inversely related, if you decrease the activation energy, that will increase the rate constant. So that will increase the rate of the reaction. So over here, we can really summarize the different factors that can increase the rate of a reaction. So one factor would be to change reactant concentrations. In particular, if you increase the reactant concentrations, that can increase the reaction rate. And we've seen this with rate laws many times. You can increase the temperature. And from our discussion just now, increasing the temperature will increase the rate constant. You can add a catalyst. All right, and adding a catalyst is essentially decreasing the activation energy. All, right? All three of these things will increase the reaction rate. So these are things that you're going to want to keep in mind when you're approaching kinetics questions on the exam, thinking about how reacting concentrations, temperatures, and catalysts can affect the rate of the reaction.